Chapter 426, Core of the Remains Cloned Lu Xu's combat techniques seemed to be overly simple. Could five strength type class C's defeat a class B? The answer was probably a no. Besides, it was tried and tested that the clone's defense and durability were unreliable either, as it was mana-consuming. After the completion of conjuring up five Lu Shu's, Johnson's mana had almost been depleted. Now, he only had enough to supply for Lu Shu's spears. The key issue was Lu Xiaoyu's power. She was unable to provide Johnson with limitless celestial powers. As a result, she only had a chance at winning quick fights with a Class B, if it was to be dragged longer. With Class B's fast healing abilities, Anthony would be unable to sustain another round of attack. In other words, now Lu Xiaoyu had absolute advantage over any Class Cs, but not so with Class Bs. She would be an easy target if her inefficient restoration of celestial powers was discovered by others. Undeniably, though, the materialization type had yet to unleash their true fighting potential. Thus, at the moment, Johnson could only be used as a functional spirit instead of a card against Class Bs, not to mention the fact that he had just ascended to Class B rather recently. In fact, the easy defeat of the pledge this time was not purely coincidental. In order to transport humans via the underground, there was a need to expend extra elemental powers and the Earth-type metahuman had yet to reach Anthony's level. What was the earthquake just now, Lu Xu? Lu Xiaoyu was curious. I don't know how it happened and I'm still unclear about the specifics till now. Grandpa has flown there already and I am on my way, Lu Xu said. At this moment, Lu Xu looked up to see an odd-looking gray cloud coming towards him at incredible speed. But upon a second look, it was not a cloud, but thousands of gargoyles. Lu Xu frowned at the strange sight. Then, another gargoyle broke free from its stones without anyone passing by, and soared towards a certain direction. Lu Xu was utterly confused. What's going on? Is it due to the earthquake? At where he himself was, gargoyles were flying to the epicenter like birds returning to their nests disregarding humans on the ground. Lu Xu's clone said, gargoyles are heading to the epicenter. We'll meet there. Li Xiao could be the one behind that crowd of a thousand gargoyles from the other side. We can't let him see my clones. As he spoke, his clones disappeared one by one. Without hesitation Lu Xiaoyu started chasing towards the direction of gargoyles. That was where Lu Xu was. Meanwhile, Lu Xu did not head straight to the epicenter as the big change might have attracted Class B pros there. Moreover, currently all gargoyles were like a compass, a guidance to the center of the remains. Probably no individual practitioners or Class Bs would be willing to forego this opportunity of securing the jewels of the remains. At the moment, an expert dressed in red uniform raised his eyes and gazed at the returning gargoyles. As the officer of affairs, he had planned to reunite with his inferiors first. But the remains did not give him enough time. Go to the core region first. Maybe my men are on their way there as well, thought the officer of affairs. On the other side, a group of individual practitioners were surrounded by gargoyles. Just when they were about to give in, the monsters suddenly left them alone and flew away towards something unknown. One of them asked, yet to regain his bearings, what happened? Why did they suddenly leave? Is it related to the earthquake just now? All of them were badly wounded and scarred. The sudden ray of survival was absolutely unexpected. Some immediately collapsed to the floor. In fact, since the dawn of the cultivation era, people had only gotten stronger physically instead of mentally. Hardly anyone could remain calm in the face of death. It was a reoccurring scene throughout the entire remains. Everywhere, throngs of gargoyles were flying to the core region. In the meantime, Lu Xu stood beside the epicenter with his cap and mask on. He had no idea what was triggered by the breaking of the scarlet stone plate, but a pitch black palace had emerged from the surface right in front of him. What was more, crowds of practitioners gathered around him, all came for the gargoyles. The monster's homecoming event had yet to end. 
those early birds had already entered from the main gate of the palace, drawn to something hidden inside. Besides, despite the large area of the building of up to hundreds of hectares, it was still not big enough to accommodate the gargoyles of the entire remains. As for the latecomers, they were all beheaded by Li Xianyi's invisible aura blades. People below gazed up at him in the air. Is that the Class A from the Golden Foundation? Definitely. Didn't you see him flying? Another person replied, he's so powerful. Just a flip of a palm could put gargoyles to death immediately with invisible aura blades. When can we be like that? Suddenly, Lu Xu heard a familiar voice. He tilted his head to spot Evan in the crowd conversing with others. This time, there was no arrogance on his face, but the young white male beside him looked calm and composed. They had intentionally kept a distance from the individual practitioners. Seems that he has reunited with people from the Phoenix Society, Lu Xu frowned. And Emily was nowhere to be found as well. Over twenty Phoenix members proceeded forward following the young man's lead. Those unaffiliated practitioners consciously stepped aside like split currents. No one dared to stand in their way. The Phoenix Society indeed had a blinding aura. When they stood in the front row of the crowd, other powerful organizations all followed suit while individual practitioners gave their way out of fear. The organizations had made their message clear, they were to compete for whatever was inside the palace. The Class B leader of the Phoenix Society looked at Li Xianyi with a calm gaze and requested, Mr. Li, permission to enter? Chapter 427, Out of Control Li Xianyi did not take the lead into the palace but waited at the gate to kill the monsters. But no one else dared to enter if he did not. Although powerful, he was unable to stop so many organizations from their desire of remains exploration. If he ever attempted to, it would certainly result in a grand battle. But Li Xianyi did not utter a word to him, still killing gargoyles as if there was no one around. The Class B expert frowned a little but kept quiet. As the strongest man in the cultivation realm, Li Xianyi had the greatest power of speech. The Phoenix Society certainly had no intention to be the first to anger him in spite of their thirst for the resources inside the palace. Wait until others took the move. That was the plan of the Phoenix Society. Lu Xu eyed the front row and Coral's figure caught his attention. She was standing in a group of the deities and seemed to be well respected for her high position. Lu Xu was somehow confused. Was she not a mere class D? A person beside Lu Xu asked, Can you see that Northern European group named the deities? Oh, they are the deities? Correct, the man replied mysteriously, That girl over there is called Coral. It's said that after her awakening Odin's sign of the Gungner appeared on the back of her neck. She has the highest chance of ascending to class A in the entire deities. The sign of the Gungner, another person asked back, she has awoken to Odin's bloodline? Can't say for sure. After all, the deities are quite mysterious. Who knows? Only then did Lu Xu finally understand the limelight on Coral inside the deities. However, he was worried that she was too innocent to handle the killings. Li Xianyi spent a while longer slashing gargoyles. Along with every move of his invisible aura blade was new fear generated in those big organizations' hearts. They had agreed to join forces in resistance if Li Xianyi was to compete for the relic, but no one dared to disobey him now. Most of the big organizations had over twenty people, only the heads of the collection of gods and the pledge were standing alone. They had expected to meet their subordinates here but ended up seeing none. At the moment, they were already raging inside. Apparently, their people were killed. However, with no basic communication tools and such a vast land how could they know who did it? The leader of the pledge stood out. When are you done? We want to get in now. Li Xianyi gave him a brief glimpse. Wait. Immediately, he attracted looks of admiration from the individual practitioners below. He had become their ideal selves, the height they dreamed to ever achieve. There are too many gargoyles. What on earth is inside the palace? Never mind. 
let's wait and see till the director kills all the gargoyles. Can he? Without a doubt. The old man had his reasons for the slaughter. At the moment, it remained unclear what was inside the palace. Whoever entered had to face those monsters. Thus, it would be much easier with fewer gargoyles inside. At this moment, over a thousand gargoyles were approaching from the air, seizing every individual practitioner by terror. To their surprise, however, a fat man was chasing close behind, shouting at the top of his lungs, Don't go, brothers. Let's have more fun. Li Xianyi's face darkened. It was Li Yixiao. Individual practitioners almost jumped out of their skin at the sight of so many gargoyles. It looked like the apocalypse. How many gargoyles are there actually? How come they gather together? I heard that somebody was causing trouble with infinite gargoyles. What the heck? Can the major director of the Golden Foundation take down so many of them? It will be hard. Pinning down one gargoyle was an easy feat for Li Xianyi, but with thousands together. To tell the truth, he could, but it would consume too much of his mana. What if someone took advantage of the situation when his power was exhausted? Recognizing the severity, Li Xianyi immediately jumped high to avoid the crowd. Remain's exploration took priority at the moment. If not, Li Xianyi would be more than willing to give Li Yixiao a good thrashing. Li Yixiao sighed pitifully as his backers disappeared into the darkness in the palace through its main gate. Why did you leave me like that? In the meantime, Lu Xu pulled down the brim of his cap and tugged up his mask. He already heard people discussing about that fellow. At this instant, to everyone's surprise, Li Ishiao dashed into the crowd decisively like a small hill, as if still running after the gargoyles. He continued yelling, Don't leave me, brothers. Then, in everyone's astonished stares, Li Ishiao ran past the individual practitioners through the front row of big organizations and into the palace without even a look at Li Xianyi. Those organizations fell silent. So he entered, like that? Then, Li Yixiao's laughter came out from inside the palace. <laughs> Let me have a rest. <laughs> I'm going to get that relic, be asterisk cheese. Li Xianyi? Big organizations? The rest? Was there something wrong with his brain? Lu Xu took a while before recovering from his shock. Was that the legendary technique of laughing past your obstacles? As expected, Li Ixiao was super unreliable, anytime, anywhere. When Lu Xu almost thought that Li Ixiao had forgotten their mission here, surprisingly the latter had made it into the palace in such an unfashionable manner. Honestly speaking, just now Li Xianyi had the recurring urge to stab him when Li Ishia was entering. But he did not. A thought suddenly crossed Lu Xu's mind. Did Nye Ting really send Li Ishia here for the relic, or was his actual intention irritating practitioners from across the world? Wait a moment, so why was he here too? Lu Xu bit his gum, are you kidding me, Heavenly King Nye? Although it was true that Li Yixiao almost forced him to come, Nye Ting was definitely aware of that. All of a sudden, a commotion started in the crowd. The young Class B expert of the Phoenix Society curled his lips and led his team into the palace. Following them everyone else moved forward as well. The situation had gone out of control. Chapter 428, Coral's Advantage Those big organizations were left with no other choice. At the moment, they had to follow after Li Ishiao. Else, they might not be willing to compete with him after returning to the real world had Li Ishiao obtained the relic. By then, no one would be able to wipe out Li Ishiao in secret. And no one, really, had the guts to face the fury of two Class A's. The crowd burst into the palace, and Lu Xu passed off as an individual practitioner. To him, the Divine Water was his greatest takeaway of the trip and there was no need to serve as cannon fodder for Class B experts. Just take it slowly, bruh. At that very instant, Coral suddenly turned, darting her eyes over the crowd, including where Lu Xu was. She did not pay attention at first, but soon she noticed his presence. 
Yet, Lu Xu had disappeared when she looked back again. Her deity's friends were bewildered. What are you looking for, Coral? I fell in love with a boy in the remains. I think I just saw him, Coral replied with a smile. The whole team immediately skidded to a stop. They looked at Coral with disbelief across their faces. What? Did you just say you fell in love with a boy in the remains? Her beauty was publicly recognized. Moreover, for the members of the deities, they were well aware that Coral's future could be way brighter than that of any one of them. Earlier Coral had many pursuers, but many had given up along the way as they calculated their chances of winning her heart. They seemed to have placed Coral at a higher level than themselves. In addition, her father's stand had always been one of disapproval towards his daughter's admirers. In his opinion, it was too young for her, a 21-year-old girl, to start dating. It should wait until after her graduation. More importantly, she should only make her own decision for something as significant as this after stepping out of her ivory tower, to witness the dark sides of the world. Truly, no one dared to chase his daughter now, but how could he expect his daughter to chase someone else? Speaking of which, Coral had never been interested in anyone before. It was human nature to have feelings for others. But her teammates certainly did not expect Coral's honesty at this moment, as though she did not care at all people's views on this. Love at first sight in the remains. Are you serious about it, Coral? Another person asked. The deities was a close-knitted team. Internal friction existed only among Swedish, Finnish and other places leaders who held conflicting opinions. But there were hardly any fights nor discord among internal practitioners of the same country. Actually, the deities was also one of the few transnational organizations. Most of the groups were uninational, like the Heavenly Network. Thus, they asked whatever they were curious about without much constraint. Yes, I am serious. He's powerful and kind, very nice to me too. He was a bit greedy for money, though. But that certainly cannot eclipse how good he is. He is like the sun, Coral said, happiness and admiration displayed on her face. Her comrades were stunned, oh my gosh, Coral's really in love. Look, her IQ is already going down. In their opinion, it was not enough to judge from the fact that one was kind or nice to Coral. Who would not show his good sides when chasing his girl? But, it seemed that the guy was interested in Coral's money. One person paused for a while before asking, Do you know how old he is, Coral? Coral froze. No, she had asked, but Lu Xu did not answer. Then do you know his family background or anything at all? No. Her comrades looked at one another, helpless. Why did it sound like online dating? Those long-distance relationship couples love to give up their lives for their lover without even being clear on the other person's conditions. Coral, we know you like him. So what's his attitude? Why is he not by your side to protect you? Another person asked. They could not understand, should the guy not at least keep her safe if she really liked him this much? Coral shook her head, he doesn't like me now. They all drew a startled breath. What was wrong with this world? The golden girl of the deities was in a one-sided relationship. Doesn't matter, though. I will succeed. I have money, her face was if nothing but seriousness. What logic was that? Can love be purchased? They found it hard to understand, only because they had not met Lu Xu. If they had, they would know how much an advantage that money had to Lu Xu. But, wearing a cap and a mask, even Lu Xu did not expect to be recognized by Coral with her casual glance. Despite the wide gate, it was still impossible to fit thousands of people in one go. With throngs of individual practitioners crowded at the door, it made it even more difficult for those at the back to advance any further. Lu Xu was stuck there too. There was a practitioner in front wielding a sword. In spite of its awesome appearance, it was just a normal weapon without mana. In fact, many individual practitioners possessed such cold weapons nowadays. 
Unable to obtain a magical weapon, they had no alternatives but to purchase a high-priced alloy sword as their weapon. Anyway, those swords were pretty sharp and hard. When that fellow was jostling forward, his long sword swept here and there and almost hit Lu Xu a couple of times. Lu Xu patted on his shoulder and pointed at his sword, asking him to put it away. However, the man continued pushing in after only a brief look at him. Watch out, man. Lu Xu patted him again. When the latter turned his head impatiently, Lu Xu forcefully pulled out his sword from his grip non-negotiably. Ka. After breaking the sword in halves, Lu Xu returned it to the guy, acting as if nothing had happened. From Park Zhengho's distress, plus 666. Though furious, the man did not dare to fight back at all. Lu Xu's eyes lit up at the amount of distress points. Actually there were quite a number of individual practitioners with such alloy weapons. He suddenly shoved those in front aside, excuse me. Regardless of whether anyone could understand his Chinese, Lu Xu had already come near to another individual practitioner. When the latter was about to push forward after a short glance at Lu Xu, his alloy knife was taken away and broken into halves. Then, looking natural, Lu Xu returned his broken weapon and moved on in another direction. Holding his broken blades on his palms, the man was utterly shocked and confused. Who was that? Why did he break my knife? Where did he go? From Antoni Maldonado Evangelista's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu was stunned. Another lousy name? Chapter 429, Apologize to the Major Director, Quick. Lu Xu was breaking people's weapons as he jostled forward. Soon, dozens of individual practitioners were holding their own broken blades in the crowd with distress written all over their faces. Lu Xu watched cheerfully as the distress points increased. Suddenly, a number of entries with English names were registered. What happened? He did not know that at that time, the pledge leader was angry for the extermination of his team while Coral's comrades were holding grudges against him too. Lu Xu decided to record them down in his notebook if he had the time. But judging from now, there might be too many to note down one by one. When he finally made it into the Black Palace, his practitioner victims were still pondering about life with their broken weapons. Who the hell did this? What an ass! The architecture was pitch black throughout with a spire hinting at the Thai culture. At the moment, everyone was crowding non-stop into this majestic structure in search of treasures. The view reminded Lu Xu of temple fairs. It looked almost the same as the Guanlin Temple Fair in Luo Cheng, except for the absence of food vendors. Lu Xu gave it a serious thought about the possibility of making a fortune here by selling fermented bean curd. But he had noticed something strange. They were deep into the palace and they had yet to see a piece of basic furniture like tables or chairs. It was completely empty. On the walls, there were scribbles that looked similar to those in the cavern where Inferno Blood Devil was found. Everything was creepy. Besides, where were all the gargoyles? Based on their huge population, they should be perching everywhere in the palace now. But why did he see none? Then, a paunchy figure with a cap and mask caught his attention from the crowd of individual practitioners. Furtively, the man was following the big organizations behind. Lu Xu was stunned. Was that not Li Yixiao? It seemed that he had blended into the crowd instead of searching for the relic himself. How cunning! Could it be he was wary of the potential danger inside? There were predictions on the Golden Foundation forum that future remains were highly likely to harbor Class A spirits. Earlier, Lu Xu had expected Class B Inferno Blood Devil to be the strongest native creature here, but he might be wrong. Therefore, it would be silly of him to believe that he could obtain the relic on his own. At the very least, he would not relish a front row seat before the situation was clear. Worried about the possible threats, those big organizations were also walking behind Li Xieni. Honestly speaking, no one was confident enough to face a Class A spirit himself. Neither could one expect to be rescued when attacked. 
at present, more deaths meant fewer competitors. Suddenly, however, Li Xianyi turned and walked back to his Golden Foundation team. May we know where you are going, a person asked. Li Xianyi shot him an astounded look. To reunite with my people, of course. The rest exchanged startled looks. What about us if you do not go in front? You need to walk in front, please. What if there are Class A beings, someone voiced their common opinion. The palace was really too creepy. Li Xianyi was puzzled, didn't we already agree during the meeting that I cannot take part? Fine, now you say that you cannot be involved. Who proposed the meeting? Quickly step up and apologize to our major director. In fact, the meeting itself was a failure. The initial goal was to contain rising experts of the post-regeneration era, but they had failed to realize that they could not do anything about it regardless of whether Li Xianyi followed or violated their rules. Now, Li Xianyi was unparalleled except for the Heavenly Network. You will need to be equally powerful to have that bargaining chip, won't you? As Li Xianyi slowly returned to his Golden Foundation team, a question hovered over the big organizations. Was Li Xianyi not said to be principled and righteous? In reality he was almost the opposite to that. The information was untrue. For God's sake, what was wrong? Those practitioners who were itching to explore the palace all came to a stop. It was the downside of having too many big organizations on the site. No one was willing to be the guinea pig, as they were well aware that others were very much anticipating their failure. The leader of the collection of gods was already in a bad mood. At the moment, he let out a cold laugh and said in English, just as a reminder, there's another person in front of us all. What if he takes the relic? I suggest we join forces to venture inside together. Don't let the heavenly network to pocket the relic. Fair enough. Indeed, Li Xiao was already inside. What if there were no spirits in the palace, or simply no Class A's? What if they were just paranoid? In any case, Class A beings only existed in people's imagination, and no one had seen any in the remains. The cog leader showed no expression. Unable to find his subordinates, he knew the best option now was to cause confusion. Then, he could gain advantage from the disorder. In the meantime, Li Ixiao was being a quiet audience of their guileful schemes. He loved it. Honestly speaking, it would be even better if it developed into a crowd fight in the palace. However, the only fly in the ointment was that he could not understand what they were talking about. Suddenly his peripheral vision caught a glimpse of another person with a cap and mask just like himself. Wonderful. Lu Xu's face darkened. He pulled down the brim of his cap and was ready to hide. But before he could, Li Ixiao had already jostled to his side. <laughs> Found ya. Right, Lu Xu lowered his voice. Although other people could not recognize him in this outfit, Li Ixiao definitely could. He had seen Lu Xu's and Lu Xiaoyu's caps and he still remembered the patterns on Lu Xu's black cap. Meanwhile, those big organizations had reached a consensus. All Class B experts walk in front. Fight together if there is any danger. Okay. Okay. Fragile agreement. They would certainly drag one another down in real peril. Li Ixia whispered, what did they say? I think I heard my name just now. Lu Xu summarized up and replied, the Class B from the Collection of Gods said that you are already inside and cannot let you keep the relic to yourself. Thus they formed a union to explore this palace together. Li Xiao froze. What happened to those secret schemes? That gigolo was actually uniting everyone to go together, furthermore, using himself as the excuse. Lu Xu murmured, now. What the f? Before he could finish his sentence, Li Xiao suddenly threw away his cap and mask. Right there, he bounced twice to capture everyone's attention. Hey. I'm here. I didn't go in. The cog leader. Li Xianyi. Lu Xu. 
Chapter 430 Men born humble as ants, yet live up to be glorious as God. People turn to see a fat man bouncing around in the crowd of individual practitioners, his cap and mask in his hand. Was that not the Liatio that they were just talking about? But who was the other person beside him wearing a cap and mask just like him? It was such a great shock for Lu Xu. Bloody hell, this Li Xiao would even make things harder for his own people. He had heard stories of the Lao's remains from that old folk. Back then, there were quite a few candidates from the Heavenly Network. Thus, Lu Xu had always been curious why only the two of them were sent here this time. At first, in his speculation, the rest might have hidden somewhere and would only identify themselves at the point of need. But judging from the current moment, it was highly likely that they had no other teammates, because Nia Ting was worried that Li Xiao might give his own men a hard time. Then the question was, were you not worried about me, Heavenly King Nia? Suddenly, Lu Xu felt unease in a frosty stare. Having already been exposed, Lu Xu decided to avoid no more. Then, he turned to see the Class B expert from the Collection of Gods glaring at him. Probably the man would have grudges against himself too, thought Lu Xu. As expected, an entry set in. From Nojua to Kenabu's distress, plus 381. He knew the Heavenly Network and the Collection of Gods were never at peace. Based on his expression, the Japanese seemed more than happy to slaughter him and Li Xiao. Thus, if given the chance, Lu Xu would be glad to kill this Nojoa too. Certainly he could not win the normal way, as the man was clearly advantaged in all aspects. But what if he could launch a secret attack? Those individual practitioners around Li Xiao were all in shock. Why did you hide among us just now? With the gazes from big organizations, the low-leveled practitioners felt compelled to step aside leaving Lu Xu and Li Xiao at the center of a circle of one meter in diameter. Those complaining about the limited space earlier did not utter a word now. Meanwhile, the big organizations were stunned too at the current situation. Only two people were sent from the Heavenly Network? Could it be they want to maximize their average strength? Then, was it possible that the other guy was a Class B2, same as Li Xiao? Yet, there was no information on the new man, and neither could they match him to any known heavenly king given the knowledge on their physical traits. Could he be a newly ascended class B in the heavenly network? This eastern country was so powerful. Coral looked at Lu Xu's figure from behind the crowd. She knew she had recognized him correctly the moment she saw him together with Li Xiao. Her comrades could guess it from her cheerful smile as well. Following her gaze, they saw two people in the crowd. It definitely could not be that fat man though, he was such an eyesore. Hence, it must be the man beside whose face was hardly identifiable. Ecstatic, Li Ixiao turned to Lu Xu. Ha! <laughs> they can't use me as an excuse now, can they? You are still concerned about this right now? Lu Xu had almost got used to his temperament and gave a nod of assurance. Possibly no. Lu Xu thought, you probably would have been besieged if not for the top priority of locating the relic now. Moreover, Li Xianyi would likely be one of those beating you up. At this moment, the leader of the Phoenix Society let out an arrogant laugh. We the Phoenix Society shall take the lead then, since none of you dares to venture further. After that, he took the initiative to advance inside. Currently, there was another structure in the innermost area that had yet to be explored. However, at this instant, the entire palace suddenly started shaking again. All the individual practitioners immediately glanced around warily, and some tried to force their way out but only to find it was too late. Rapidly the whole building sank into the ground, pulling along everyone inside. Then, the patterns on the palace walls caught Lu Xu's attention again. Could it be a trap? To groom a monster using human blood? Anyway, it seemed like the case for Inferno Blood Devil. The situation suddenly went into chaos. The most unruffled of all was still Li Xianyi. With his sword, he could easily take down even a class of being. Li Xianyi curled his lips. Posturing. 
the palace descended for a total of two minutes. Now, it was utterly impossible to estimate their distance to the surface. Moreover, the building was again buried by earth. Without the relic, no one would be able to escape alive. Individual practitioners were all flustered. They were unable to bear such turbulence with their low capabilities. What happened? Are we trapped? It shouldn't be that dangerous with all the big organizations with us. It was merely a word of comfort that was not convincing after all. Away from the light source, the entire place soon plunged into complete darkness. Torchlight, an individual practitioner said. At the moment, a ball of growing flame suddenly appeared on a Phoenix Society expert's palm. But in the next instant, a golden ray shone from the crowd, so blindingly bright that it offended the Class B's eyes. The expert's hand jolted, and the fire was immediately distinguished. What the freak? Turn it off now. From Howard Miller's distress, plus 399. From. As a matter of fact, Lu Xu was shining at a whole direction, not a single person. The intense atmosphere in the palace was instantly punctuated by furious bellows. Who the hell is that? Am I blind? At that time, almost up to one quarter of the people in that direction was facing Lu Xu. Li Ixiao marveled at the effect. Impressive. The individual practitioners behind him were all in shock, not knowing what he was holding. Was it a magical weapon? But bro, it was not very nice of you to set off an indiscriminate photo attack against various big organizations. But before they could give it a more careful thought, Lu Xu had turned, looking innocent. Freak. Moore had gone blind. Lu Xu felt that the illumination of his fifth star would soon be hopeful if he continued to provide this all-round lighting service. But when he turned to the next direction, he suddenly saw Coral gazing at him against the strong light. Her joyful expression seemed not even a little diminished and her silver-gold hair was sparkling in the blinding radiance. She had recognized him, Lu Xu had confirmed. At that moment, a sentence crossed Lu Xu's mind. Men born humble as ants, yet live up to be glorious as gods. It was not meant to describe one's beauty, but it did pop up in his head. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show